Hey, everybody. My name is David Race. I'm the chief editor of Dentistry IQ, back for another episode of Dentistry Unmasked with... Hey, everybody. Pam Maragliano Muniz. David, it's like Christmas in the summertime. I love presents. Love presents. Love them. We've Actually, got some no. good ones love too, right? A box of presents. So a pre presence within a present. Yes. And that's what I was going to say. I do love presents, but I really love good presents. And sometimes you get to your office and there's something waiting for you. And you're like, oh, what I get now? But then I do this. Can I do it? I'm going to do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, there's definitely more than one thing in here. And mm -hmm. um, now I want to know what it is. And we got the same present. So we thought today we would crack her open and just talk about some of the things that we got and some of the products that we love. So, yeah. all right, let's just like start with, because any present you get right before you open it, you say, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Commission's Choice. This is really cool of you to send us this for us to assess, see what we love, um, provide honest feedback. That's like, that's the integrity level. And that's so valuable to, to myself. And I know to you too, Pam. It really is. And I think it's super cool that like they sent it. They're just like, here you go. Give it a whirl. Like, let us know if you like it, don't like it. And it's like, there's like, they don't, they don't, they don't want anything in return. So we were like, let's just crack this box open and see what's there. So you want to go first? Yeah. Is this like confession time too? Because like most times at Christmas time when I was a kid, I might have cracked open a present and then re-taped it and resealed it. So <laughs> Well, we have to can't be a hundred percent off the cuff. So I I kind of did the same. But I'm not gonna lie, the only way I think I would have been happier with what's in this box is if Bob Marges himself jumped out of the box and was like, I'm gonna show you how to use all these things. That'd be pretty cool. Not a cake though, Bob, just, just a box with supplies, just to be crystal clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I'll tell you what I, what I pulled out on top and I'm going to, if you're watching this, you can see it. And if you're just listening to us, like many of you do right now, I'm looking at um, clinician's choice resin blend LV, which I adore. Cause if you've ever taken a direct course from me, I have hammered you as an audience member on dipping your instrument in your adhesive. So there's a better way. There's a better way. And using an unfilled resin to I, I like to make your composites look like butter. If you see a patient who has the most beautiful composites you've ever seen, yeah, they've used an unfilled resin. That's like facts right there. Yeah. Yeah. So if so I love the ability to I mean nothing sticks to anything. That's amazing creating um, beautiful restorations that look good, not just day one, but look at a decade later and longer. Follow the science. I love this product and I'm very excited to have a little more gear. How about you? I love it. So Resin Blend LV, look it up, check it out, give it a try. If you're not using an unfilled composite as part of your armamentarium, you need to. And so that's a great one to check out. So cool. speaking of composite armamentarium that you really can't live without, I found True Dental Dam. Oh, oh my goodness. Nice. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. So basically, I know we've had episodes before about rubber damming and all that stuff. And I'm telling you, the dam makes a difference. Like if you just buy the cheapest dam out there just because you're trying to save money, and I don't even know what this one costs, to be honest with you, you need a quality dam. And so if you have a dam that doesn't rip on you and actually kind of hugs around the tooth, that's how all of these influencers are having such beautiful rubber dam photos. Cause I get rubber dam envy. Do you? I, the whole rubber dam fam thing. I had to like join the gang and, and let's be honest. Like why did we all hate it in school? It tore. We're doing it by ourselves and We're a tour. We're doing it by ourselves and a tour. So yeah, do it the right way with the right materials. And I don't know, rubber dam isolation is pretty fast and effective. And I'm a big GV blacks. Like only principle I love every day is convenience form and a rubber dam for me is total convenience form. I'm working on a type of knot once that's in their mouth. Absolutely. And then I, even my assistants are like, I can't believe how much I can see when we use the rubber dam. So I love that nowadays my assistants like, how about we rubber dam that let's rubber dam that I'm like, let's freaking dam everything. But okay. Number one, damn it all. Damn it all. <laughs> 
dams are purple and they're thicker and they're they're just like a nice thick like perfect perfect thickness for this dam can i also share something which i know i didn't invent i don't know who invented it but i feel like i finally found a useful use you know when you like walk anywhere usually like a parking lot or a park or whatever and you see those little they look like the nike swooshes with the the floss attached to them yes those little plastic POSs. we use them for rubber dams so while we're like, so you can take the little pointy end and you can flip the dam around the tooth or around a marginal ridge if you need to. And then, because I feel like there's many times in life, but definitely with a rubber dam, I wish humans had a third arm. And so just to have more hands to get in there. And so this is a really great way for your assistant to floss easily without having to use two hands to floss while you're trying to hold the dam down. So. Ooh, that's a great tip. I have not yeah. done that before. Oh my gosh. Yeah. As long as the contacts aren't too tight and the floss is like too hard to get in between there. So we have broken them a few times, but um, awesome little, little tip there. So true dental dam, definitely check it out because I, I'm not gonna lie. You probably noticed the box is open. I'm like holding the dam. It's, I used it and it's freaking awesome. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and can I circle back on one more rubber dam point since everybody quits them after school? Yeah. Young dentists, one, do it. Just do it. Get in the habit of doing it. Train your team to do it with you so it's really, really fast or train them to do it together and you walk in and it's finished, however you want to do that. And don't skimp on the number of teeth that you punch holes for to isolate because what Pam shared earlier, the vis like the visibility you gain, it's that means we don't just punch one hole and work on one tooth or two or three holes to work on one tooth. Like give yourself some real isolation and field of view. And this dentistry thing gets a whole lot easier. I also find it interesting how many patients like it. You know, I feel like in yeah. dental school, patients didn't they, they didn't have a choice because we didn't have a choice. Like everybody yep. got a rubber dam. And then we think it's, you know, we're waiting for patients, like we explain it probably not in a great way. And we're like, we're going to do this like clunky, cumbersome thing. You want it? They're going to be like, no, I don't want that. But when you tell them it's going to help your bond better, it's going to help keep, you know, debris out of their mouth, especially yeah. if you're removing amalgam yep. and it's just going to help the whole process be cleaner and neater. Many patients are thrilled to have it. So I don't know. I think definitely try to get into that process there. So what's next? What did you find? All right. So also very excited about this. I'm going to pop this up for those of you who are watching us. This is dual force. It's clinician's choice sectional matrix system. I'm without insulting anybody, I'm guessing almost everybody here, if not everybody here is using a sectional matrix system as compared you know, compared to a circumferential system with exceptions. And we can talk about those, but um, I'm totally pumped about this. I'm always exploring the best matrix systems out there to use. Cause let's be honest, right? 80% of what the average, at least general dentist does, it's a posterior class two restoration. So I'd like the best gear. And they're also one of the most annoying things that we do. I don't know about you, but I mean, there's been plenty of times where even using a sectional matrix system where I'm working away and maybe my contact isn't as tight as I'd like it to be, or my contours aren't exactly what I want them to be. And there's certainly not, there's a one size fits most, you know, most systems, but one size fits all, not always. And I also love here that they have different size wedges and they're, they're like significantly different, the different wedges. So I feel like that gives us a lot of flexibility with the different types of restorations that we do. So I'm psyched about this. I also like the bands, how they have the two, yeah. I don't know what you want to call them. There's like the two rings around it. So yep. I think it's going to not fatigue as quickly as some other bands that are out there. I agree. So, so question for you, do you pre-wedge when you do restorative? I don't pre-wedge. I probably should. I know people that are pre-wedging and then they use the wedge with a little shark fin on it to protect the adjacent tooth, but I don't. Are you a pre-wedger? I became one and I have to shout out Lee Brady for this. So, you know, Pam and I are very fortunate for those of you who've not met Lee, but we, we get to hang around really cool people all the time. So 
just post conference discussion, chilling out one day, and she started showing me like data on like the average tooth takes three to four minutes to actually gain true separation from the neighbor. I'm like, oh. She's like, so yeah, David, if you just pre-wedge, it probably takes you three minutes to prep. By the time you actually are ready to restore that tooth, you have true separation and now you're not racing against the clock and wondering. And, you know, um, good on you, Lee. My contacts have been um, great. I've, you know, I don't, I don't, um, not that I ever nicked a neighboring tooth, but other people I know may have nicked teeth before. So um, I don't nick teeth. It's, it's just, it's really helped me personally. Um, and I know, listen, there's a lot of super talented people out there that, so maybe, you know, all of you who are listening, like you don't need to do that, but it just really helped me personally, you know, get my game to a better spot. Yes. Who's going to pre-wedge next week. And I'm going to get back to you and tell you Give how me the great scoop. it is. I mean, why not? Okay. So let's talk about this. Do you yeah. pre-wedge and then re-wedge or do you pre-wedge, take that wedge, chuck it and get a new wedge? Are you using, are you using double the wedges in your appointment? What's like, what does that look like? So first, dentists have no fear on the one cent wedge if you have to reuse a brand new wedge. So are if, you calling me cheap, David? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, people who are not in this virtual room with us together. No, but let's be honest, right? Some dentists we know would be like, oh, that's two wedges. I don't even really want to use one wedge. And, you know, I heard the wedge doesn't do anything anyway. It's the ring that does the work. So there's all the things that people say. So I will tell you, if if I don't, damage the wedge, then I can use the same wedge. But if I'm dropping my class two and I'm I'm reshaping my wedge as I'm shaping the the tooth I'm working on, then yeah, I just pop it out and, and start from scratch. It's just faster and and um and you brought up another good point, the different sized wedges. Like when's the right time to use the small, the medium, and the large, other than like we just stick it in there and it feels right. Right? Options are good. Yeah. So do you use like a big fat wedge to try to pre-wedge or do you just sort of fit what like is like something that like takes a little firm pressure to stick in between the teeth? Yeah. I, I go with the firm pressure. I go with the wedge that I feel like I would wedge with when I'm, I'm restoring the tooth. So I don't want to over wedge necessarily because to your point, um, I've had light contacts too, but have you ever had one? You're like, oh dear God, I think nobody's going to ever be able to floss between these teeth. It's so tight. So I try to find that happy sweet spot. I love that. Yeah. I tell a joke. I'm always like, Oh, no chicken here. And I just try to move on with my day. So I, I get that. it. <laughs> You're like, that'll loosen up over time. It's going to be fine. Yeah. You'd be fine. Keep flossing. It'll, yeah. it'll, it'll wear itself out. Floss, don't floss, whatever. Yeah. It's all good. Water floss that shit. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. We've got G5. So Ooh. yeah. So not everybody pre-treats their preparation. And I don't know about you, but I use desensitizer, G5 glutaraldehyde-based desensitizers on everything. I use them before I bond restorations, before I bond composites, crowns, temps. I mean, all of the things. Like, what are you doing? I, I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a raving fan. And, and for me... I'm I'm less worried about the sensitivity because I feel like as a team, we really are meticulous with our process, but that whole bond degradation thing, like that's a real thing. And if, and if we want our restorations to last multiple decades, which direct composite can last 20 years, gang, um, that, that is, um, a big yes to that happening. I think it's, I mean, and I believe it's, I'm guessing that this is probably an FDA thing that it, they, that these materials are called a desensitizer because they're so much more, yeah. right? Like they, yeah. yes, they will help to desensitize your, your tooth. So if somebody has dental hypersensitivity, you can paint some of this on and usually they'll get immediate relief. So yes, that is a thing, but it also cleanses your preparation, right? Isn't it antimicrobial? Yep. And so, I mean, it really does more than just desensitizes. So if you, and it increases bond strength. So, I mean, I can't imagine bonding without having this as part of the steps. No. And it's, I mean, how much longer does it take you, Pam, to do that step? It, you know what, in the scheme of life, it doesn't take long. And you want to know how long it takes? 
read the IFU and follow what it says because there's some second. materials. Read the IFU. What's that about? <laughs> oh my gosh. You want to hear my line? I do. I say, if a product says FU, you probably didn't read the IFU. Ooh, I like that one. Thanks. I came up with that one myself. Yeah. I like so that. Read the instructions for use because if you think a product doesn't work and you didn't read how to properly handle it, I mean, if you're just listening to this, I'm like giving you that eye, like it's your fault. Your you're fault. getting the stink eye right now, just to yeah, let you know. Some side eye. We'll give you a little side <laughs> eye. So yeah. So you definitely want to make this as part of what you're doing and also follow the IFU because I know that there's some materials that are 10 seconds. There's some that are a minute plus two applications of one minute. And yeah. regardless, whichever one you use, G G5 is bomb, but whichever one you choose to use, use it the way it's supposed to be handled. So there's that. Love. All right. I just randomly grabbed. So this is sort of the other side of that direct restoration. Like we're wrapping it up where our contour looks pretty darn good. And we all know that biofilm is like the kiss of death. So we've got to polish these things really well. So I grabbed the ASAP all surface access polishers are in my hand right now. And there's a lot to love, Pam. So go first. Cause I've got like so many things I love about this. Oh my gosh. No, same. I remember seeing these polishers and I remember thinking, mm, I don't know. I like a point. I like a cup. I don't know how I feel about these little feathers. Like, I'm not sure. Let me tell you, they're awesome. I love them for occlusal surfaces. I yep. love them for anteriors. In fact, you put some loops on when you're removing, because I think one of the worst thing I hate, like I'm, I don't use hate that often, but one thing I hate is when I see a patient who had a careless orthodontist remove their attachments <laughs> and you see like this swirl of diamond, you know, like scratched of their enamel. It's so sad. You can literally like, so you could take the bulk of an attachment off you make sure you're wearing high magnification and you can use these and you can actually watch it take the composite and the bonding agent off the tooth. You can literally remove an attachment without damaging the enamel at all. So, I mean, gosh, these are like an absolute go-to for composite polishing. What's, what say you? What say I? All right. So I love the two steps, the concept of pre-polish and then really fine polish. To me, it simplifies what we do. And if we're trying if we're trying to really have like invisible speed and that's really the game, right? We want these things to last. We don't want sensitivity, but I'm thinking like invisible speed when I'm doing a composite restoration, that means for me, I don't want 14 polishers in my system. I want to minimize what I need, um, and, and need to stock. So I love the concept of, you know, two steps, pre-polish, polish, go, and the data on how much less time it takes me to achieve a high gloss, it's like a half to a third of the time of most of the polishers on the market, which is, you know, kind of a testament to the science that went into building these. I agree. And the other thing with them here is there's two sizes. Yeah. So there's a large, almost like your soft flex discs or other discs that you use, there's a larger size and a smaller size. And so it's really a one size fits all here with these discs. I mean, they're they're just awesome. Like I was psyched when these yeah. came in. Not only was I excited, do you know how many people in my office tried to like take this from this box? And I was like, no, you can't use it until we talk about it. And there was so hand slapping. I know, oh yeah. So I'm telling you, this is the first thing that's going to get plucked out when the box is uh, fair game for everybody. Now, I know you said the two step, but then <laughs> this little puppy showed up in the box and I actually had to take it out and use it. It's called Final Shine. All right. I saw that. I Okay. So I, you know how I love to complicate things and I like, I like more steps for me, like more is more in many aspects of life. And, um, I do like the two-step and that is my go-to, my standard way to go. But yep. this Final Shine, it's freaking awesome. And for those of you are, who are not familiar with it, it's almost like, the um oh my gosh what's that called on the lathe the buffing wheel like the little buffer oh yeah 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 so it's almost like the that I sh those rag wheels thank and you the robinson bristle brushes and rag wheels and thank you the prosthodontist who can't remember that's great um it's like a rag wheel 
all the way onto a a, a latch handpiece. So it's yeah. just a like teeny little thing. And they're awesome. Have you tried this? I have not tried these yet, but I too am a lathe nerd. So I'm going to, I'm thinking like teeth that have like our super high value. I'm thinking all the things that I really want a great luster on. Yeah. I'm kind of stoked to try it. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Beautiful for composite, beautiful for provisionals. Yep. For those of you that like to scratch up your composites for your perichymata and to have your, you know, your different um, anatomy that you've built in and you don't want to ruin it once you've polished, these bad boys are phenomenal. So, so super... you just totally redeemed yourself on forgetting rag wheel by bringing perichymata into the conversation. I totally kept that in my back pocket just so y'all thought I wasn't a total dumbass after that. So thank you. I appreciate the acknowledgement. Love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, all right. I'm also very excited about these bad boys. Um, Bob Margis talked about Evanes. Yes. The composite material. And we've got Evanes and Evanes Silk. Super excited. Talk about that one. Yeah. I. You know what? And again, conceptually... For me and systemization, like the, give me simple dentin, give me simple enamels to work with. And in nine out of 10 situations, I'm a happy guy and I can get harmony. Then I'm, I'm in a really good place. And one out of 10 times I need to level up my game. Um, as you know, Bob showed us a lot of simple ways to, to kind of marry this, like, here's a dentin, here's some, um, um, you know, FX shade and then a little enamel and good to go. And I've seen hundreds and hundreds of cases that he's done. I'm like, that's got to be seven shades. He's like, that's just two shades and a little FX color, Dave. I'm like, okay. It's an amazing thing that you can do with two shades. I'd say most of my composites are two shades. I used to try to complicate things way more in the past and I didn't get as good results. And so when it comes to composite, I think there's a lot of great ones out there. There's a lot of really great ones out there, but a lot of it comes down to how it feels in your hands. And so yeah. I love when my friends sit me down and tell me about a composite that I maybe didn't know of, you know, um, clinician's choice is a little interesting in the sense that you really only get them through shine, right? So it's like in the U S at least. And if you're not a shine person, you might not even encounter them, but they're like a, like a dark horse, right? Like they're just, their products are so solid. And so I think, especially when it comes to a universal composite, there's a lot of them out there and we have the luxury of picking the one that is like amazing in our hands. And so if you don't, if you're not like in love with your whole heart, with the composite you're using, give this guy a try, because let me tell you, there's a lot of good ones out there, but this one, it's got, I love the handling of it. So I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it. I'm. It's new to me, um, to be honest with you. It's, it's new to me. So I'm excited to try it and I'm with you. There's, um, you know, there's some strong players in our industry that consistently put out great stuff. So I'm always excited to try something new and see how it feels and how it looks and how it handles. So Good stuff oh. ahead. All right. Can I get super basic? Basic away. This is, um, most of you are going to think like, all right, um, right now this is max etch. So if you're watching and or listening, you're like, well, who the heck cares? It's phosphoric etch. It goes on teeth. It does what it does. But I know I have some things I love and not love so much. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remove the hate word. I wanted to say hate so bad. But um, that I hate about Etch. So this is a re <laughs> this is a really good one for me and how it handles. How about you, Pam? Same. I don't even know who makes it, but I used to be an associate in a practice that it was almost like they went to the Jersey Shore and mixed sand with their Etch, and it like takes this crazy amount of hand strength to get this stuff to squirt out. And when it does, it's dry. It's like dumpy, and then like you're just trying to like rub this like sandy Etch onto the tooth and you're like, what even is this? Like, is this even doing anything? And so like, thank God for universal adhesives because I'm sure that just wasn't good. So I'm all about like a nice, 
creamy etch that goes where you want it to go, doesn't go where you don't want it to go, and also works. So yeah, no, I mean, we talk about our day and trying to make our day better, more simple, have systems in place. And it doesn't even matter. It comes down to the smallest detail. If you have something that's reliable, then it's just like, check, you've got it. And it's great. So no, I'm with you. Etch, I mean, basic, but yes, it's important. We use it day in and day out. It drives me crazy on the random times where somebody's brought something in and we're testing product. So you went like the dry, sandy, scratchy. Have you ever had the ones where you go to express it and it's like an explosion of etch? So before you put it in a patient's mouth, I feel like I've got to bleed the etch, then put my tip on, then bleed my etch again. It's maddening to me to have to do that. It's such a waste of time. No, I totally agree. And there's some etches where like, you just start it and it like this weird, clear, light bluey liquid comes out before the etch actually does. And I'm like, what even is this? Like they, they don't tell you to shake it. So, I mean, it should be pretty ready to go. So <laughs> shake no, and yeah, no, I think having like a solid etching system is key. I would also add that, is it just me or is the syringe kind of big? I feel like yeah. it's got, a, there's a lot of product in this one syringe. So I know that there's some out there where the syringes are kind of small. And so therefore you're going to blow through them really quickly. Like, hello, landfill. Um, you know, this, you're going to get a lot more with yeah. just a single purchase. I love that. I love that. And hello, big insert case where you're going through totally, you know, you're inserting 12 veneers. I don't need to run out of etch. Like, no. Right. And and I don't need like all this stuff is very time sensitive and somebody had to get up to get another tube or put another tip on a new one. I'm like, mm, no, thank you. Stress. I think it impacts oh. the patient experience. I think it makes us look so ill-prepared when we have to be like, Sabina, Sabina, can you get me another etch? Like, I just feel like let's just have it all for that one appointment and have yeah. it there. And Ready. we don't want three or four, because if you have three or four syringes of etch, they're inevitably like half used, partially used, gone, whatever. <laughs> like it's nice to have like just like the one potpourri. thing there. Oh yeah. And you know, what's funny. You said, I'm going to start with something basic. We've probably spent more time on etch than we have on anything else, but you know what? We use it every single day. So kudos clinician's choice. I think max etch looks, it's good. So it's I mean, going to be a winner. Absolutely. So I've got one left. How about you? Yeah. That's that's it. So we've have got that? MPA Universal, a light cure adhesive system. So there's a lot of ways to stick a restoration to a tooth. And it really, I think, depends upon you as a clinician and you as a practitioner and what works for you and also your team. So I think simplifying the workflow there's certainly value to it. You know, um, I don't know, I think, but, you know, making sure that you're using something that you can use on different types of restorations is super helpful. And, you know, making it less difficult for your team to keep track of things, you know, a universal adhesive is going to help with that. I totally agree. It's, it's, I think we, for all the right reasons, often underestimate how difficult what we do all day really is. And now imagine we've got, um, say, a brand new assistant whose everything is new and, and it's, it's complicated for us. It's even more complicated for a brand new assistant or a brand new associate who's right out of dental school and just had limited experience with materials. And now we can have one universal adhesive instead of several products and why is this one the best one for this situation, but not for this one? And it's simplification and our process is so important. I completely agree. And it's not lost on me that we were basically provided an entire workflow of materials from Clinician's Choice. And so I love using compatible materials too. So not that they're not compatible because you could use this adhesive with any composite in the market, but I like like I get super excited about a consistent workflow across the board. So I, I do try to kind of keep that, that, that similar. So I'm, 
I don't want to say it. Like I, I want to go back to work. I love hanging out with you here, but I'm excited to get back to work and get in there and, and just kind of like clinicians choice it up and see what happens. We'll have to do like a follow-up. Um, that'd be, that'd be cool. Maybe we could do a follow-up and maybe it's just like a downloadable resource where it's like a couple of cases that we used our presence to build. I think that would be amazing. Yeah. And we'll take photos and we'll be like, you know what? And then you guys could be the judge. And you know what? Obviously we won't have like decades of follow-up, but we'll certainly be able to follow it up and follow our patients and, you know, keep this, this process rolling and kind of show what it looks like in a year or whatever yeah. from now, because dentistry unmasked is here to stay, bro. I like that. I like that. I can't believe it. And I can't believe as usual, we just cranked through another 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. It's like goes by so fast, but we're talking about all of our favorite things. And this was True. actually really fun. Just the two of us hanging out, talking about different materials. I think we're going to have to do this again. I like this nerd box opening thing. It's right up my alley. <laughs> Mine too. So clinician's choice. Thank you so much for all of the presents that you sent to us. And thank you for giving us something to talk about today and giving me and my team more things to play with, because that is one of my favorite things to do in the office. Yeah, I'll second that. So till next week on Dentistry Unmasked, we will see you guys. Hope you have a great one. Bye. Cheers. Thank you everyone for watching or listening to the show this week. And thanks to our guests and sponsors on this episode. Please check out our social media at Dr. Pamela underscore Miragliano and at Dental Economics Official. Or you can check me out at Ignite DDS or at Dr. David Rice. And go to dentaleconomics.com to receive dental economics. You can choose to receive DE in print or digitally, and you can also get the details of our Principles of Practice Management Conference on our website. If you have topics or guests or anything you'd like to talk about on the show, send us an email to dentistryunmaskedpodcast at gmail.com, and we will do our very best to make it happen. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.